Welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome to this RPG Maker VX Ace tutorial. Today we are going to be doing a spike trap. Now it's not going to be a simple spike trap like I've seen a few online. This is going to be a slightly more advanced spike trap. Now the way it's going to work, we're going to detect when the player is approaching the trap. Then we're going to, de to delay the execution of some code by a short time. And then we're going to shoot the spikes up out of the floor, hopefully stabbing the player in the feet, causing an endless amount amount of pain for both themselves and the entire party. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is create an event. Now, I'm doing this in the top left corner of my project. The main reason I'm doing this is just to keep it off of my map. Now you won't see this event in the game. This event is purely just to display uh, some information to the player or actually to store some information in some variables that we'll use later. I'm going to call this EV underscore system with a capital S. I'm also going to change its trigger to parallel process. That means that this will continuously run in the background over and over and over again, updating the variables infinitely as, as, as our game plays out. The next thing I'm going to do is go into our contents and I'm going to add a command. Now this command that I'm going to add is called uh, control, uh, sorry, control variable. It's on page one in the game progression group. I'm going to control a single variable. This variable I've called player X and I'm going to use the set operation and the operand is going to be game data. I'm going to expand this and go into the character. Let's make sure the player is selected. So character players map X. So that's going to store the characters X inside of a variable called player X. I'm going to copy paste this event and I'm going to edit it so that we can store the player Y variable as well into a separate area. So I'm going to create player Y. There we go. Now, with both player X and player Y variables being stored into their own variable, I'm going to add another command. Now, this command is on page three and it's called get location info. Now, what I want to do with this one is I want to pull the player's region. So I'm going to say that the variable for info is going to be player region. You can create these variables any place you like in your game. I'm going to change the info type to region ID and I'm going to use designation with variables. Now the map X is going to be player X and the map Y is going to be player Y. So essentially what we've done is we've created a system that will continuously update the player's region on the map as well as the player's X and Y position. Now we'll use these variables later to determine whether or not a player is within a region and whether or not the player is close enough to the spike trap for the spike trap to begin its death strike. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is I'll go back into my map area. I'm going to go to the regions and I'm going to make sure that I've got some regions set up. I've done this earlier, but I'll redo them. I'm going to select region number one and I'm going to create those around the area where my spike trap is. This means when the player enters this region, the spike traps will begin their death strike. So exit out of the region mode and back into the event mode. And I'm going to give this game just a quick play test just so we can make sure that this is working. Now, if you press F9, I believe, you can bring up a list of all of your switches and variables. I'm going to go down to variable 0001 to 10, and you're going to see the player's X position and the Y position and the region. Now, I'm going to step into the region and we'll bring this back up. There we go. So now you can see the player's region has been set to 1. The player X and player Y variables are also being updated. Fantastic. Let's move on. I'm going to create my spike trap now simply by right clicking and selecting new event. The first thing I want to do is make sure the priority is set to below characters. I want the trigger to be set to parallel process. I want the walking animation to be turned off and I want direction fix to be enabled. This means that when the player performs an action nearby the uh, spike trap, the spike trap won't attempt to look at the player changing the direction of the spike trap, which therefore would change the animations, which is not the desired effect. I'm then going to change the graphic to, it's, I believe it's under other, and I'm going to use the first spike trap. Now you see these, uh, see the way this is outlined here. We've got the empty spike traps, then half, then you know like a quarter out, half out, and then fully out. I'm going to use the empty one so that the spikes haven't actually come out of the floor at this point. With that set, it's time to begin our coding for this. What I'm going to do, the first part of the code is going to be a we call them a conditional branch. So I'm going to go into page one under the flow control group, select conditional branch. This conditional branch is going to be on a variable and the variable we'll be using is the player region. I'm going to make sure the player region is equal to 
the number one. So what this means is we're gonna execute a chunk of code providing the player's region is one. That means the player is standing in a region of one. If the player was to move out of the region, it would change to region zero and this chunk of code wouldn't execute again. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna untick this box that says set handling when conditions do not apply. This basically means that we're not going to deal with the fact that the condition doesn't apply. So we're not gonna get an else clause of this conditional statement. Now if I select okay, you'll see the conditional branch appears here and then that's all we get. We don't get the else and then you know the chunk of code that we would have to put in there otherwise. Now, if the player is standing in the region one, which means that we're inside of this conditional branch, I'm going to add another event command. This event is gonna be on page two under the timing group called wait. I wanna wait for 30 frames. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, when the player enters this region, wait for 30 frames, then we're going to attack. Hopefully tricking them into believing that they're gonna walk over the spike trap, nothing's gonna happen. But as soon as they get there, they're gonna get stabbed in the feet. So now I'm gonna change the direction to, um, to you know, uh, get a bit of an animation effect going on. So I'm gonna open up the next line of code. I believe this is on page two under the movement group. We're gonna to go to set move route. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna say direction fix is off. Then I'm going to turn the sprite to the left. I'm gonna wait three frames. I'm gonna turn it to the right. I'm gonna wait three frames. Then I'm gonna turn it to face up. And if you compare this, I'm just gonna show you the graphic real quick so you can see this. This looks like a character set. Now, if we look at a person, you'll see down, left, right, and up. So the left sprite is, is the second sprite. The right sprite is the third sprite. And the up sprite is the fourth sprite. Now, if you look at the spike trap, you'll see that left is sort of out. Uh, right is half out and then up is completely out. So down is, you know, not out, not out as far as the uh, spike trap goes. So with the animation set, we can then begin another conditional branch inside of here. I'm going to go into page one, select conditional branch. This one's going to have a bit of scripting in it, but it's not too hard. So I'm going to go over to page four. I'm going to go to this script section. I'm going to enable that. Now the script that we're going to use is very simple. We're just going to compare the player's X and Y position against this event's X and Y position to make sure that the player is actually standing on the event. The way we do this is simply by accessing the player game object. So we're going to type in the dollar sign or the dollar symbol. Then I'm going to say game underscore player dot X. And then I'm going to use two equal signs. So I'm going to say equals. So this is, so two equals in programming means I want to compare something. Whereas if I said game player X equals 10, I'd be saying I want to store that information. So two equals is used for comparisons. So I'm going to say game player dot X equals. And then I'm going to say dollar game underscore map dot events and then in brackets i'm going in square brackets sorry i'm going to use the at event underscore id now this is the current id of the current event so i can then say dot x so with the code that we have right now we are comparing the player's x value with the current game object sorry the current game map event x position we want to do the same chunk of code this time for the Y. So I'm going to make a space and then I'm going to do two and signs or ampersands. And I'm going to say dollar game underscore player dot Y equals, so two equal signs, dollar game underscore map dot events, so period events, square brackets at event underscore ID for the current event ID dot Y. So now we're comparing the X position and the Y position of the player to make sure that the player is actually standing on this event. Next, I want to untick the set handling when conditions do not apply. Again, meaning we don't want to deal with the else clause of this conditional branch. Select OK, and you'll see that we have a, uh, a conditional branch set up to deal with that. Now, th now, what happens here is if the player is standing on this specific event, I want to flash the screen red. So page uh, two under screen effects group, go to flash screen. I'm gonna use a nice red color and I'm gonna go with, you know, 128 strength. And for time, I'm gonna go 20 frames. The other thing I want to do is untick this wait for completion because I don't want the game to pause while this event happens. I wanna be able to just move on and let the screen flash. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract some health from the player. So I'm gonna open up another event within that conditional statement. And I'm gonna to go to page one under actor group, change HP. For the entire party, I want to decrease it by five. You can change this value to whatever you like for your game. 
Now, with the entire conditional statement being set up for the player having collided with one of these spike traps, we can then reverse the animation. So what I'll do is I'll create, so after the branch, the first branch end, so after this conditional statement, but still within this conditional statement on the outside, I'm going to add another set move route. Now this time we're going to play that animation backwards. So that's going to be right frame, left frame, then down frame. So same as before, we're going to say direction fix is off. Then we're going to turn right. We're going to wait three frames. We're going to turn left. We're going to wait three frames and then we're going to turn down. And that's all we need to do. So now if we look at the way that this code works, we first of all decide whether the player is standing on a region marked as one. Then we wait 30 frames. Then we play an animation to make the spike trap appear out of the floor. Then we check if the player is standing on the spike trap and if they are, we cause damage to the player. And then we play the animation in reverse, making the spikes go back down. Now, the only other thing we need to make sure is that the priority of this event is changed from same as characters to below characters. This means that you can stand on it. And I'm gonna select okay. Now, hopefully, Everything has gone correctly. If it has, we should be able to play test this game and you'll see how the spike trap the spike traps work. So I'm going to be walking around. You'll see the spike trap is doing nothing. As soon as we get close enough to the spike trap, it should start spiking out of the floor like it's doing now. Obviously, we're not close enough, so we're not getting the spikes. But as soon as we try and run over it, you'll see that we got stabbed in the feet. And that was causing damage to our party, which we can then confirm by looking at our... Um, uh, our soldiers HP is 557 out of 562. So the way this works is it becomes somewhat a somewhat of a jumping puzzle without the jumping, I suppose you can call it. It's a timing puzzle. You have to actually, you know, wait for the spikes to go into the ground before you run. If you do run at the wrong time, you will get stabbed in the feet, like I'm getting stabbed now. You see I stand there, we'll get we'll continuously get stabbed like that. And that is a basic semi-advanced spike trap. Now the cool thing about this spike trap is that you can just copy paste it onto your map to make you know an area of spike traps that uh, is harder to pass. You can also give the region to the spike trap and the other thing you can do if I make this region one as well like this the other thing you can do is also put this event like for instance multiple spike traps over those um, over those regions so that our spike traps will all fire at the same time you see all the spike traps fire at the same time and same deal as we walk into them we'll get stabbed if we are standing on them at the time that they reach their spiking and hopefully uh you are you guys understood this so if you have any questions you know comments feedback suggestions again if you want to know something in rpg maker vxa specifically leave a comment request and i'll try to make a video on that Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for other game development tutorials, let's plays, random instructional videos on how to make a whiteboard or how to cook something, um, just other random stuff like that. Then please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll catch you in the next video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye for now.